Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and we have another game engine. I hear half of you go, yay! The other half go, oh, do we need another engine? And the answer is yes. The answer is always yes. We need more game engines. Especially because it keeps this channel going. But anyways, what we're looking at today is Felco engine. And this engine has no right to exist. Let's put it this way. It is... It doesn't make any sense. It's free, by the way. It's not open source. And it, uh, it's really good. It's actually strangely polished good. Uh, and, and it doesn't make any sense. It's a really polished engine from a company that as far as I can tell, make mostly shovelware. So what we're looking at is the Felco engine. I will assume that it was called the Felco engine because, uh, I don't know, really big fans of Austrian bands from the 80s, uh, Vienna Calling and Amadeus. Well, that was Felco, but I also think it might just be Falcon with the N gone, but I like naming it after the band better. And here you can see it in action. And like I said, it's actually really kind of good. This is like one guy's personal engine. He made it available for free. He has made dozens upon dozens of games using it. And it's solid. It's a decent engine. It, it's kind of impressive. So what we got going on here, we're looking at the 3D view over here. You've got a number of different assets you can bring into the world. You have a hierarchy of things in the world. Instantiating objects is pretty simple. You can either create an object such as say a light. Let's go ahead there. We got a point light in our world. You're seeing the shadows updating in real time, or you can actually create prefabs, and we can instantiate a prefab into, our, oops, wrong spot, prefab, uh, such as this Ripper fellow over here, and we can put that into the world instantly as well. Let's go over here to the inspector and make him really big. All right, let's click here, 10, 10, and 10. All right, there we go, got a giant Ripper who is an animated model, um, we actually use the standard QWERTY keys for um, implementing, you know, select, move, sc uh, scale, and so on. The engine itself, all these assets are, um, as you saw from that light we created earlier on, right here. Uh, it is a component-based system, so I can go ahead and start adding components to that light if I so wish. You see the components we have here, meshes, trains, and so on, audio. So I can make this light also an audio source and have sounds come off it. I can drop a, an audio effect right into there. Uh, we can go ahead and create various different other things. We got a number of physics. We got a complete physics system built in here, rigid body vehicle physics. Uh, you got all the colliders you would expect and so on. You've got nav mesh and nav mesh agents for navigating around the world. Uh, you even have a UI tool. You got a UI builder, as you can see over here in the UI editor. Uh, you can create uh, the, the number of UI components is pretty limited. Canvases, images, buttons, and text. But frankly, that's normally all you need for a game UI for a lot of games. Um, go back over here to the scene itself. Yeah, it, it, uh, on top of that, uh, everything is done. You'll see here from scripts. Scripts use C sharp. So here is the first person controller script. Uh, you're gonna, I don't know why it does this, uh, but there's a quick error. We'll let this one load up. All right, here we go. So you're gonna see the code. Well, that looks awfully familiar, uh, but it's, it's straightforward C sharp. What you're doing is you're writing a number of callbacks on your script. So you've got a start when the game starts. Update, your code is really straightforward using things like uh, global singleton for input handling here. Uh, you've got fixed update. That's called every time the thing goes on. And I think lock controls is a local thing. So it's got a straightforward um, C sharp based scripting system. Really all you need to do is override or inherit from mono behavior and uh, implement the update function. And you can see a couple of examples from this exact, this actual uh, project where we've got, you know, uh, mouse look behavior and so on. If you've used Unity or any other C-sharp based engine, you've got a pretty good idea of what you are dealing with here. And then scripts are attached. Oops, give it a second. Uh, script are attached. Everything here is basically components. So here you can see our uh, first person controller somewhere in the world. Uh, it has these various different components on it, including a rigid body, a capsule collider, and then these two scripts are attached. And as you can see, you can pass parameters to and from those scripts. <laughs> it's just good. We can even do something like this. I come over here, I go create, and then let's go ahead and do effect particle system. There is a particle system in our world. You can see it's right over here. Let's add an emitter to it. We need a material for that. So prefab, all right, so we got a fire. Let's drop that into the material on... Oh, I think that was the right thing. Pref oh no, prefab is the whole thing. So I need to go and find my material. Materials, fire. All right, let's drop that in there. 
Boom, we have fire. Let's keep adding some emitters here. Let's go ahead and add in another emitter. And this time, let's get some smoke in there because where there is smoke, there is fire. <laughs> there you go. So you got this component-based system. You've got particle systems in there. You got uh, 3D model loaders, uh, 3D audio physics systems, a nice looking rendering world. If you do download this guide, this is one of the demo scenes that is available. Uh, there is another scene down here. Uh, very simple subway scene. Let's, which one is? Okay, this is train demo. There's also demo.scene. You can check things out. This is actually where the Ripper came from. Um, give it a sec to load. Actually, I think it might already be loaded. I just need to look. Nope, still loading. Yeah, all right. Let's give it a second. Oh, here we go. And we can navigate around the world. There we are. So there's two simple scenes to set up. As you see, we can also have dynamic colored lights. And again, all of these things are fully dynamic in the world. <laughs> it's just, yeah, uh, so that that is what we are looking at right here. A surprisingly robust engine, Felco engine is. And you might have heard uh, throughout this video a little bit of incredul incredularity, incredulous, incredulous. You might hear me be somewhat shocked while I'm making this video. Uh, and uh, that's because... Well, where it came from. So this is the Felco Engine webpage. Uh, it is available at felco3d.com. Uh, completely free to download. Uh, it is sadly Windows only, uh, but you've got a, even a alpha version released, what was that, like seven days ago, at least as I'm recording this. Uh, so it's still very much under active development. You can go ahead and download the 3.0 alpha right on there. Uh, details of what they changed. It's pretty pretty steady rate of changes going on with this engine. The only real kind of big negative here is obviously that it's not source available. So this is the Felco engine, a C-sharp based 3D game engine that is completely and utterly free to use. Uh, if you're interested, here's the company behind it. And this makes you go, what? And you can read, you can read this. Uh, they seem to be uh, based out of Russia. Uh, the... The site, the story here, it, it stops in 2012, but this is kind of like revisiting GeoCities. And then as I mentioned earlier, they've used their own engine to make a number of games on, on Steam. They've got their own niche here. And actually even the engine itself, it's here somewhere. Uh, where did you go, Falco? That's actually how I found it. Come on, Falco, you're here. I know you are. Oh, there it is, the Falco engine. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be getting updates here. This seems to be a common thread recently. Oops. Uh, in that uh, people put their game engines up on Steam and then stop updating them over time. But, yeah, <laughs> this is the Falco engine. Everything I look at makes me go, this isn't going to be any good. And then uh, when I play with it, I'm like, wow, this is shockingly good. And, and it, it really, it is. It's just, it's a solid engine. It, it shocks me that it it works as well as it is. Now, this is very niche in focus in that it's for, uh, Windows only for development and it is Windows only uh, for deployment, I believe. Let's go up here, say we want to build our project. Build project right there. So there you can see target platforms. You don't have a lot of choices. So that is the unfortunate part. But as it stands, if you are trying to... Actually, honestly, I, I don't know why I would recommend this engine when everything else exists. But... I do have to applaud. It's it's good. It's it's a really cool effort. And if this was released as open source and they wanted to have a community go behind it and uh, get in there and see what they could do with it, it's it's got a lot to, to recommend for it. It's it's an impressive effort here. And I think you could justify building a community around this, adding other platforms. The tooling is solid. The uh, the experience here is solid. The working with it, from what I've played around with, it's solid. Oh, that guy did not have a good day. Uh, it's just really, really niche in that it's it's version 3.0 of an engine that gets updated all of the time. It hasn't crashed on me once. Almost everything works exactly as I would expect it to. It is a really polished engine. I just don't know why I would singularly recommend this over Unity, Unreal, Godot, etc. But if you like what you see, definitely check it out. If it's a C-sharp powered game engine that is completely free to use, if open source isn't your thing and you just want to be the, that different kid down the block, this is the perfect engine for you. You can uh, create Windows only games, but the experience is pretty good. Like I said, this thing is way better than I had any expectations for it to be. But again, 
To finish the video, I honestly can't think of a single reason to recommend this over the other options that are out there, but I do want to promote it or show it here on the channel because it's impressive. So let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.